Hello and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marin and here you will find a little beauty, a little books, and a little teaching content. So if that sounds like something you might enjoy, I would love for you to subscribe and stick around and join me in my little corner of YouTube. Today's video is going to be a tour of all of the eyeshadow palettes I have in my collection while I talk through my plans for my Pan That Palette project in 2024. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I think the easiest way to do this is going to be just to tip you down and take you through each of the palettes. That way you can see the shades that are in each of them. I am going to group them together according to brand. And we're going to do it alphabetical because that's the librarian brain in me. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of the palettes. And then I will talk to you about the one that I'm going to choose for my Pan That palette next year. Okay, so the first brand we're going to start with is ColourPop. I actually don't have that many ColourPop shadows. I do have three single shadows. So this one is called Come and Get It. This was like a little single. I don't even remember where or how I got that, but it's just a pink shade. Then I do have two of their Super Shock shadows. I have one in OK, and then this one is in Frog. This one is quite old, so I am thinking that I'm going to try to pan it next year because it's definitely changed textures. It's just a really pretty like gold topper. And then this is actually a newer purchase. This is kind of that same type of like shimmery topper shade and it just looks like this. So I really like these type of shades. I have a lot of them in my collection, you will see. But those are the two ColourPop ones. This one still has like the bouncy texture that they are supposed to have, whereas OK, which is this gold one, does not. So I am thinking about trying to use this up in 2024, but I'm just gonna have to see how things go. Then I did pick up this Plum Season palette. This is brand new. I have not used this yet, but I got this to replace the Urban Decay Ultraviolet palette, which I really didn't like. It had like a really dry texture. So I went with a purple one from ColourPop just because I like their formula a little bit better. So I'm looking forward to playing with this, but it has not gotten any use as of yet because I just picked it up like a week or so ago. Next, I do have two quads from e.l.f. This one is the Mint Melt palette. And then this one is the Bite Size Eyeshadow Quad in Rosewater. So just very simple quad palettes. I could see myself potentially trying to pan probably this one next year, although probably not the darker shade. This one is probably going to hang around just because this is not a color story that I use very often. And I do like having greens in my collection. But this is like a very easy everyday type palette that I kind of forget I have. So you may see this in some projects next year. Then we're going to move on to Essence, and I do have these three palettes right here. So these are all like themed around a place. So this one is called Welcome to London. I have used this one a handful of times. I particularly like the blue shades in here. I think they're really pretty. Then we have the one that's based on Rome, which has this color story. I have also used this one a handful of times, although not too many as of yet. And finally, this one, which is Welcome to Miami, and it has this color story. I have not used this. You can see the plastic is still on this. I did just pick this one up not that long ago. So I'm looking forward to kind of diving into these colors more in the spring and summer. Next up is this Jungle Lights palette from Flower Beauty. This is a purely shimmer palette. I really, really like these shades, although I do not use these dark ones very often at all. I kind of stay on the ones on the outside, but I'll go ahead and swatch this one just because I think they're really beautiful. So there you have it right there. Those are the six shades in that Jungle Lights palette. These two are just not color stories that I typically am drawn to. I kind of stay away from darker eyeshadows, although they are really beautiful. Next up is H, so we have my Huda Beauty palettes. This is the oldest one that I have. This is the Khaki Haze palette. This is just a purely kind of brown toned palette, as the name would imply. I don't love this one, so I might do like a usage goal on this and potentially move it out of my collection. It's just not my favorite color story. Again, these darker browns are just not something I naturally gravitate towards, so this was probably not the smartest purchase on my part. But then we have two palettes that are right up my alley. So the first one is this new nude palette. 
I have used this one a pretty good amount of times, although you can't really tell. This was a present from my mom for Christmas last year, I believe, and I really, really like this one. The shimmers are really pretty. I do not love these super glittery, like these chunky glitters. I just find those really, really hard to use. You can see how textured they are. So these are probably not going to get a whole lot of use just because of the texture. It's not my favorite, but I do like the other shimmers in here and I really like the mattes. I think they're very pretty, easy to blend. So I do get some nice use out of these colors. And then we have the Rose Quartz palette. And this one you can tell has gotten quite a bit more use except for this shade right here, which is that weird like gummy textured one. I don't like that one, but I do love everything else in here. It's gotten quite a bit of love and I will continue to use it into the new year. I really, really love this one. So I'm hoping to get a lot of use out of it. Okay, next up is this palette from Clarity Cosmetics. This is the So Mermazing palette. I was influenced to buy this one solely by Sarah Rose because she talks so much about it and this is so pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch the shimmers for you. They are the ones that I more use. I don't really use the mattes a ton, but these shimmers are gorgeous. So let me go ahead and swatch them. So here they are right here. They're just so pretty. Again, these are the type of shades that I really, really love to put over an eyeshadow look, and I just love the shimmers. Next, I have all of my Natasha Denona palettes. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the single shadow and the smaller ones first, and then we'll dive into the larger ones. So I do have this little single shadow. This is in Pure Love. This was like a Sephora perk, I believe. It is a really pretty pink color. I have used it a handful of times, particularly around spring or Valentine's Day. So I'm happy to have this one in my collection. It is beautiful. Then I have these two five pan palettes. So I have the mini star palette and the mini retro palette. Again, these are really nice everyday looks. So I love having these and I use them quite a bit. Then I have her larger palettes here. This is the pastel palette. This is another one that just has really, really fun colors in it. I really like using this particularly in the spring and summer. You can see I have gotten a decent amount of use out of them, although there is no way I'm going to be hitting pan on any of these shades anytime soon. Then I have the Retro Palette. This is one that is very much just an everyday type look for me. So again, I really like these colors. I can use the darker ones on my lower lash line, but I really love these lighter shades. You can tell those are the ones that have gotten the most use. I also picked up the Retro Glam Palette, and this one is so fun. I particularly love like those greens and teal colors. This one hasn't gotten a ton of use as of yet, but every time I've used it, I have thought that it's beautiful. So I do need to give this one a little bit more love. And then I have the newest one that I've picked up. This is the I Need a Nude Palette. I just got this one during the Sephora sale. And again, this is straight up my alley. These are the shades that I like to use for everyday looks. So I know this one is gonna get quite a lot of love. Then I have one palette from Revolution. This is the Ultimate Nudes Light Palette. I purchased this to replace the one from Huda Beauty because I dropped that one and it shattered into like a million pieces. This is essentially the same thing. It's just not the Huda formula. So I don't like it as much. I think the shimmers are a little bit harder to work with and the mattes aren't quite as silky smooth, but it is still really pretty and I can see myself getting quite a bit of use out of this, perhaps panning it at some point, although not in 2024. Next up, I have this limited edition palette from Tarte. This is the Buried Treasures palette, and this is one of the oldest palettes in my collection. You can see I do have pan in this shade up here, and this one is really, really close as well as this one. So I feel like this is one that I could get used up if I gave it some dedicated use. Then I have two palettes from Too Faced. Now the Chocolate Bar palette has a shade in it that I am currently working on in my Project Pan. And that shade is this one right here, which is Marzipan. You can see that it's got just the slightest little bit left. And I will be decluttering this at the end of the year once that shade is used up. This palette is very, very old. This is probably the second oldest palette in my collection. So it's just time for it to go. I don't love the other shades. You can see they have not really gotten a ton Ton of use and I have probably had this palette since 2016 or 2017 so it's just time for this to go I'm gonna finish up Mars the Pan because that's a shade I really love but the rest of these are just kind of like ho-hum nothing special and I will not miss this palette at all 
On the other hand, I do really love this one, which is the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. And as you can see, this one's gotten quite a bit of love, more than the Chocolate Bar palette, and I've had this one for a less amount of time. So this is one that I could potentially see myself using up at some point, although again, I probably will not touch these three dark shades right here, but I could see myself using the rest of these, maybe in like a usage goals project or something like that. I do really love this. It does still smell like peach, and it just makes me happy. So this one will be hanging around. Next, I have this little tiny Stargaze palette from Ulta Beauty. I think I saw Kelly Gooch talking about this one. And I just really, really loved like the simple color story. This is one that I could travel with and get plenty of looks out of. I think it's really, really pretty. I'm going to pull it out for December. So you will be seeing this in my makeup basket because I do love these colors for winter. Next up, this is the penultimate brand. This is Urban Decay. So I do have two Urban Decay singles. This one is in the shade Sin. This one is in the shade Foxy. This is one that I'm probably going to work on panning completely next year. This is just a beige colored eyeshadow. It doesn't even really show up that well, but I can use this all over my lid and then just put shadows on top of it. So that's probably how I'm going to use this. I could also use it on my brow bone or my inner corner because it is light enough. Enough, but this is one that I would like to go ahead and get done because it's not necessarily a favorite or a shade that I want to keep in my collection. On the other hand, Sin is one that I have actually repurchased a few times. And it's right here. It's just a very simple, I feel like one and done type shadow. So this is one that I do not want to rush through. I really, really like this. I just need to remember that it's in my collection and actually give it some use. Next, let's talk about this one. This is the Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. And if you have been following my Pan That Palette project for 2023, then you already know that this is the one that I am working on panning before the end of the year. So this is what it is currently looking like. I just repressed these three shades right here because they were getting really hard to use. This one was super crumbly. It was like crumbling all over the place. So I thought maybe repressing it would make it a little bit easier to work with. And then these two just had huge pans and I was having a hard time picking them up on the brush. These two shades I am not touching really at all this year. So these are not a focus. And this one I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get done before the end of the year. But I would like to go ahead and finish these three. So that's kind of like a little spoiler of where we are at this point in November. But this one is going to be decluttered at the end of the year because there is no reason for me to hold on to a palette that has essentially three shades left and three shades that I don't particularly love. So this is the oldest palette in my collection. I will be sad to let it go, but it did get a lot of use, a lot of love, so it is time. I also have this Urban Decay Naked Cherry palette. This is one of the only like solely pink palettes that I have in my collection. This is very reminiscent of Modern Renaissance in my opinion, particularly this shade right here. And I like this one again for spring, Valentine's Day. I like the pink shades, so I enjoy having this one just to play around with. Then I have this Urban Decay Wild Greens palette, and this one was not a very well thought out purchase because I don't really find myself reaching for this or using these shades very often. Now, obviously, these are pretty standard. You can find these in a lot of palettes. I picked this up more for the green shades, but I don't really think that they are anything spectacular or special. So if I could go back in time, I would not purchase this one, but I do want to give it some love, so I'm not quite ready to declutter it as of yet. And then we have the newest addition to my Urban Decay collection, which is this Moon Dust palette. This one is the Space Rider palette. I picked this up from Ulta, and this just has four of the Moon Dust shades in it. So this one has Star Cowgirl, Space Cowboy, Wild Dipper Rides Again, and Cosmic Space Dust. I did swatch this already in my most recent makeup basket, which I'll link up above. But these are just, again, glittery toppers that look really pretty over eyeshadow, and I'm really happy to have this in my collection. I can see myself getting a lot of use out of this. And finally, the last brand that I have in my collection is Violet Voss, and it is this Golden Sunflower Fun Sized Palette. And y'all, I love this so much. This is yellow. As you saw, I have like no other yellow in my collection except for a couple yellow shades in that Clarity Cosmetics So Mermazing Palette. But these are very fall toned to me. I used this a lot in the fall. I love the shimmers, love the mattes. This is just really, really fun. I could travel with this if I wanted to and get some really nice 
basic looks or some more exciting ones with these yellows down here. But I love having this in my collection and I do not want to rush my way through this. I enjoy pulling this out every once in a while and giving it some love. So to do a little bit of math, that works out to 27 palettes in my collection. Now that's from the mini palettes all the way up to the larger palettes, 27 total palettes in my collection as it stands right now. But two of those will be leaving my collection at the end of 2023, which will bring the total down to 25. Yes, that's still a lot, but eyeshadow is kind of like my Achilles heel. I love eyeshadow palettes. This is by far the largest chunk of my makeup collection is eyeshadows. I just love them. Um, so I am going to institute some rules for myself in terms of eyeshadow palettes for next year. So stay tuned for like my goals video. And then I do also have six single shadows in my collection right now. So it's a lot of eyeshadow, but I thought it would be fun to kind of bring you along and show you what my collection is looking like because I learned a lot from trying to pan that Urban Decay Naked 3 this year, and obviously I do still have a month left, but you already saw I still have several shades left to try to pan in like a month's time. So I've learned a few things about myself, about my makeup habits, and that kind of influenced the palette that I'm going to be working on in 2024. So I am again going to go with a palette that I have had for a very long time, and it is going to be this little one from Tarte. Now the reason that I'm going to go with this one is first of all because the pans are not huge. So there's several different shades in here. I can do a complete look with this palette, and I already have pan in one of them, and I'm close to pan again in this shade and this purple shade here. And I just feel like this is more realistic than another full size palette. The other thing that kind of influenced that decision is that I don't have any other palettes that I would want to use consistently for a large amount of time that I'm looking to get rid of. The only one that I don't love is that Naked Greens palette, as I already mentioned, but there is no way that I would be able to pan that one because I just don't like those shades enough. This one is an everyday palette. If I were to travel somewhere, it could go with me and I can get multiple looks out of this. I know I love the formula. I know I love the colors. So this is the one that you are going to see in 2024. Yes, it's a little bit early to be filming this video, but I wanted to go ahead and just solidify things like in my mind. So this is the one I'm going to be working on in 2024. I will be tracking the total amount of uses and I'm actually not going to touch this until January 1st. So this is how it's gonna look the first time I use it in 2024. But I feel like this one could potentially be done even before the end of the year. And then maybe I can start working on some of those smaller palettes as well, or the single shadows, etc. So that's that. That's what you're gonna be seeing next year. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my eyeshadow collection. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel if you would like to see more from me, and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone. <laughs>